I'm Interghost and today I'll be reviewing Treasure Island Dizzy or Dizzy 2 on the ZX Spectrum by the Oliver Twins from August 1987. Also appeared on the Crash issue number 72 in 1990 and on the Dizzy collection in 1991. As you might already know this is the second in the series. So basically this game is quite similar to the first game. You're the character Dizzy here. Um, it does have several differences to the first game. The main one being the scrolling inventory at the top of the screen. So instead of carrying just one item, you can now carry three. Uh, but unlike the games to follow this one, you have to collect the items in order and they scroll through rather than selecting which item you want to use. Now there is a cheat on this game as well, and it's by holding down the letters P, A, and O and then pressing enter on the title screen, which is the um, initials of the people who wrote the game, Philip and Andrew Oliver. When you press C, you can then use Z and X to scroll through the screens and press space to reappear on any screen you want to. So this is a eventual adventure puzzle game. And it had uh, several different areas. They had the haunted mines, the tree village and the underwater um, levels. Not only did you have to complete this whole map here, but you also had to go back and collect 30 gold coins to complete the whole game. An interesting fact about this game is it was also released on CD back in 1989, so this is way before the um, PlayStation 1 came out or the Sega Saturn. So this game was way ahead of its time in the fact that you could get it on a CD, and it loaded the same way as it loaded on a tape, but you had to load special program at first and then you could plug in any CD player into the spectrum and it came with 30 Codemaster games listed there and each game only took 20 seconds to load. The Bourbon House in Trowbridge is the rather modest base for the ambitious teenagers. Twins Andrew and Philip Oliver are 18 and have just finished school. His bedroom's been turned into a computer workshop for the three, who spend every spare minute designing new games to tempt today's generation of video-happy youngsters. It's a time-consuming business, but the dividends are high for those clever enough to come up with what the publishers want. But success does mean hard work. So the first appearance came, so that means doing nice graphics in the pictures, right? And the sound in the background. And in fact, now we're adding talking to our programmes even. How long does it take you to do one of these? A programme, it I should imagine it take three months of evenings, and that's about two hours an evening or something. Has it been worth your while yet? Um, in promises, yes. We've got contracts for money, but unfortunately they're all on royalties, so we haven't received a great deal to date. So are you three sold on the fact that computers are for fun rather than for business? Uh, fun, but if you're making the fun, then it's a business. The twins want to set up their own full-time business. And if things go well, it should make their fortunes. That's right. She did. It could be a great deal. We've heard of some people who have made millions on it, so we're, we're trying it as well. Is that taking over, or is the, is the fun the most important thing? It's not fun programming. It's boring programming, but you get a great deal of pleasure from seeing the finished product in the shops. So, thanks for watching. If you like this review, please subscribe, as there are more on the way. Cheers.